to iCloud. Yeah. Is it on? Ah, it's showing yes. recording. Good, good, good. Uh, sorry, I was distracted precisely because of that button. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We are four and four, eight, nine, ten people. That's very good. It's a lovely number. And we've got some five or six nice poems and an evening of discussion. Not too many poems, which allows us to talk more around each poem. And in fact, when we have too many and too long poems, that kind of uh, makes it a, a problem. But we have only one new person, Aradhya. Uh, Aradhya, please present yourself to the group a little bit. Say a few words about yourself. Thank you, sir. And uh, as I said, lovely to meet you all virtually uh, because of the days that we are in. But I guess uh, it's kind of a positive effect as well because me, if the pandemic hadn't come around, we wouldn't have uh, taken these initiatives to get together virtually and to use technology to you know connect uh, no matter where we are in the world. So I was in Sanal from 94 to 2003 and uh, brilliant years of my life. Uh, I, I guess the speed creativity was thrown into me in those hills. Uh, and uh, after that, I went to Delhi College of Engineering and uh, then I did my MBA from SMS. From where? Uh, uh, SMS, SMS, SMS. Delhi University. Delhi. Okay, Delhi. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in the usual corporate uh, that way. I still am, uh, so to speak, but over the past, uh, you know, half a dozen years, I've managed to get more control over uh, what I do and what kind of uh, jobs I take. So I work as a creative content manager uh, for real estate advisory firm in Noida itself. And uh, I wrote a book uh, in the, I guess, uh, I took a sabbatical for a couple of years while I was working. Uh, after I was, I had been working for like five, six years. And during that time, I traveled throughout India and I wrote a book based on those travel experiences. And uh, that brings me to 2020. I got married in 2019. It was another milestone. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it. That's what I've been doing since leaving tomorrow. Uh, Aradhya, that was quite good. We got three quarters of it, but the the, the audio was skipping a little bit. Uh, this might be my audio or yours or everybody's, but I think everybody should speak slowly and clearly so that we don't miss any words. If we speak too fast, uh, the damn thing skips a bit. Okay, well, welcome, Aradhya. We won't... Uh, present everybody to you that would be too long and I think we'll just have to talk to you privately one at a time and I will try and phone you one of these days to have a little chat with you but welcome to the group and uh, so we're going to have our first three poems are from waiting in line poems from the last time and so I'm going to send the first one uh, to you right now and it's one shared by kumkum g so get ready to to um to present your poem kumkum it's coming to all of you by whatsapp right now and it's out there for you to read peruse quickly and after that we we'll let Kumkum Kum recite it. Kumkum, you're on mute. 
Yeah, Harbans, let me know when I should start reading it. Yes, uh, let's give it two minutes more for everybody to read. Are we all okay? Anybody not yet yeah. ready? <coughs> okay, it's it's a nice simple poem and it, we can start now, Kumkum. To poem, once a snowflake fell on my brow and I loved it so much and I kissed it and it was happy and called its cousins and brothers and a web of snow engulfed me then I reached to love them all and I squeezed them and they became a spring grain and I stood perfectly still and was a flower. So this is a poem about the enchantment of a young girl, it seems to be, uh, receiving, feeling her first snowflakes who would like to kick off on this subject? We've all, we all, every child remembers their first snowflakes. Does this poem succeed? Does it make us want to be a little girl like her and want to become a little flower like the snowflakes? Or do we think that this is a bit too wishy-washy, too sweet, too sugary? Or how do we receive this poem? Oh, where do you see the, the young girl part of yeah, where do you see the girl? Uh, you think it's not a girl? Wait, I don't know. Uh, certainly, certainly not young. Oh, not young. For sure, Wait, young. I mean, there is no, there is no, I don't see any evidence to say that it's a young girl. Well, just because you wouldn't be kind of old and see snow for the first time. No, I, actually, that's not true. We had snow in uh, Seattle, a lot, whole lot of snow, and I had been slow for a long time, and it was beautiful. So, you know. I, I, can, I can second that. I'm, I'm in my 60s, and I have the same feeling when I go out and lift my head up to the sky, and the first snowflake drops. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful image, and it's something that... Uh, that transcends uh, age, I think. But I'd love to hear from the, uh, are we allowed to ask the, uh, the person who wrote the poem that uh, how, uh, it, was this her intention for it to be a young person? Uh, Maninda, I must just remind you of our little rule. We don't sure. know, we don't know who wrote the poem and we don't ah. ask and we don't care who wrote the poem. We let the poem stand on its own and we try and analyze and, and uh, understand it for itself. And even the person who is presenting the poem may or may not be the author. Some people present their own poems, but even when they do, we don't know that it's their poem so that we are free to review the poem on its own without considerations of authorship in the group here and now. We need this freedom to be able to analyze and criticize and talk about the poem without feeling that we are going to offend or praise uh, the poet in the room. In fact, we don't need him. We should not need him. The, poet, the poem should stand on its own. So that's just a reminder. But uh, your point was remembering our first snowflake. But then you see, I mean, it's your first snowflake that has this effect on you. Uh, not when you are 50 or 60, would you uh, be kissing snowflakes when the first winter snowflake fell on you? Raj? Yes. yes. Yeah, why not? Can I say something? I think it's like coming of age. Can I say something? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Chitra, bolo, bolo. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say that uh, the word once, I mean, the first time it's not mentioned there. It just says once a snowflake fell. Yes. So maybe the person yeah. was 
first outside and yeah it was it it doesn't mention that it was the first snowflake they just say once a snowflake fell. so the person may have been in that kind of mood at that time when the snowflake fell and uh, he or she expressed the feelings so it's not uh, necessarily, necessarily but first uh, time, first chitra mm -hmm. yes the once could be once upon a time once that means a long time ago i remember my first snowflake i think the once suggests uh, a childhood or an old memory and not therefore uh, the last snowfall of yesterday or it could it, 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 it could it I or it could sorry go ahead no but what then, i i felt was that the once like chitra uh, means that uh, well one day <clears> it happened <throat> it's yes. not that like it's a first snowflake but also i feel it's like coming of age to suddenly be grown up and to flower into uh, a person i don't know a woman i'm presuming Uh, there's some I, debate I, about that, Vinay. Can you can you tell us? Can you support the idea that it is a girl? Uh, And some people because, are saying uh, it's not uh, even sure that it's a girl. Flower. It's a it's a woman or a man. It could be anybody. I say it's quite clearly a girl. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Why do you say it's a girl? Uh, I think mean, it's a girl too. Sexist. I. <laughs> Vinay, finish. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a, uh, a careful... uh, Rahul. Wait one second. Let Vinay finish. Yeah. yeah. I finished. I finished. You finished. Okay. Uh, Rahul, please come in. Yes. Uh, so, uh, although it seems like a girl who uh, you know fell in love with the snowflake that fell on her brow, but I, being a farmer, read a little bit more into it. to me it feels like a field or maybe a seed lying in the field and uh, you know the snowflake fell and lots of snow came in and then it turned into water and soon spring came and it turned into flower oh, wow a whole you know, new reading <laughs> a whole new reading <laughs> very interesting so it's very interesting <laughs> Oh, it it fits. It fits, Rahul. Yeah. It fits. What what is? <laughs> Could be. Ah, but except on the brow. It, except on the brow, and then I kissed it and was happy and called its cousins and brothers. Uh, not quite. Not quite, Rahul. Not quite. It it doesn't completely. The personification is not really there. That this is a seed, receiving rain, uh, snow for the first time. and somebody has their hand up rajesh uh, yes uh, i i do kind of agree with uh, rahul sir because at the end when it <coughs> it ends with her or him becoming a flower uh, so it's kind of uh, like a progress from how they said the snowflake first uh, when they first encountered the snowflake and how it and how the experience uh, matured them into something uh, you know it becomes a snowflake yes. your audio yes. is a bit uh, patchy i think you it's not properly uh, yeah we're uh, cutting it, yeah. maybe you should uh, get rid of the gizmo and talk directly with your phone cut off the the wifi uh, the bluetooth try now no we can't hear you yet it's rebooting his wifi or his uh... actually <coughs> melinda i think has her uh, hand yes. up uh who had her hand up Uh, uh, Maninda, Maninda G, come in, Maninda. Oh, thank you so much. Um, you know, I I want to go back to the word once, and um, for me, that's that is a moment in time, 
and not really linear time, but just a moment in time, any time. And this, this that, that really fascinating review by um, of uh, of how the earth can be the face on which that snowflake fell um, is just beautiful. Well, the farmer gave us this new view on it. I'm not totally convinced, although it, it could be, because um, again, the, the earth or the seed wouldn't say once a snowflake fell on my brow and kissed it and I loved them all and I squeezed them. The water bit fits a little bit, but um, and the flower fits, but I'm not sure this poem is really about the earth or seed welcoming snow. I think this is a real person and I think it's a girl because of the, the sentimentality of the whole poem that I became a flower. I don't think I, you would have a man or a boy saying I became a flower. I mean, this is just prejudice, if, uh, but it is a current this is the way men think and girls think. Now, maybe you can get men who are, um, what's the word, wow. Sen sensitive like this, but you, I don't think it would be uh, so common to see a boy expressing himself in this way. And I think this word once does take us back to childhood, if not uh, in the present, but the poem is about a childhood encounter of a first snowfall. Not for me, though. Not for you, Naninda. No, not at all. In fact, that word once, it immediately resonates as a moment in time. And uh, uh, that word. And not, uh, I, I, I can see where you're coming from, though. It could be that, uh, that you're talking about, oh, once upon a time. I can see that. I can see that. However, once me, in my I... childhood, it means once in childhood and early in my early youth. That's the idea. Sure. I mean, that I, 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 I acknowledge that that's how you feel about it. But for me, the way I resonate with that word is more mm -hmm. as a moment in time, any time. It could be, uh, and, and not necessarily in my childhood or adulthood or anything like that, but just as a moment, as a measure of that moment in time. Okay, Vivek, please come in, Vivek. Yeah, so what I wanted to say was that on first reading, it's almost practically as if every single line is like a, it's like a slideshow you're watching and each line is slowly fading into the next. If you literally go down the whole poem, it's like a beautiful slideshow that is starting. But then, you know, the more you think about it, I think whether it's a girl or a boy, I really can't figure that out. But the fact is it somehow reminds you of a person who is maybe lonely and there's this pristine white background everywhere. And there's this yearning for, you know, deriving all the joys from, <clears throat> from, uh, this experience of snow and like capturing it in your hand and stuff like that. And then it's like literally like you believe in yourself, you believe that this lonely person is now, you know, literally wanting this transformation into something far beyond himself slash herself, uh, which is in this case a flower, the perfect natural phenomenon that nature has to offer. That's what I think. I think uh, you said something there that could help us here, uh, that this idea of I became a flower uh, doesn't have to be the earth or a seed, but uh, the person saying I became a flower just as seeds would. I became a flower nourished by the rain. It's the yeah. nourishment of the rain that made me become like a flower. Radhe, back on. Radhe, can you uh, continue? Aradhya? Hello, can you hear ah, me? Are you, yeah. Ah, good. Hi. Welcome, Hi. Aradhya. Uh, hmm. I decided to leave the video off because it might have been uh, straining the connection or something like that. But I think this is 
better audio for all of you i hope absolutely yeah. absolutely <laughs> yes uh so my two cents were along uh, rahul sir's interpretation especially at the end there uh about it being a seed germinating into a flower and uh, uh about gender i will i mean i am not i'm i won't lean one way or the other it could be him it could be her so all in all i think a very precise and very uh i apologize i am not able to figure out a word uh, but very precise and very uh, condensed poem i would say indeed okay and that's enough time for this poem uh, kumkum would you like to say any a few closing words before we move on for example who wrote the poem uh dikhi giovanni us am i near Can you hear me now? Now we can. Yeah. Okay. So it's written by Nikki Giovanni, and um, uh, uh, just my take on the poem. When I read it, I had uh, listened to a discourse on the consciousness basis of war, that we are all interconnected and it's the same energy within us, and that's how I interpreted this poem. That it just reflected that same energy being reborn as a plant, as water, as snow. as being reborn in a new body you know that's how this poem uh, poem the day i read it was um that's how it uh, impacted me so thank you okay kumkum send us the name of the author by whatsapp so that we can look that up i think everybody should when they after the reading uh don't just say the name of the poet please send it in writing so that we can look up the poet and so on actually we we uh, you know put down comments so that's also done we send comments to vivek at least right yeah um okay we're moving on to the next poem now ladies and gentlemen and that is a poem that was sent in by vivek g so vivek here it comes Uh oh Ah It's not yet out one second Yeah it's coming to you now It's not leaving my computer somehow sorry something's gone wrong ah it's gone now it's gone now right did you did you get it yeah. have you gotten it yes i got it okay uh while you people are looking at it allow me to take a a little pause for myself i'm an old man and i drank something uh before the meeting i'll be back in a minute so carry on just read for a while all back chair hey sanjeev hi caps hey alu but i don't where do i have to get it maybe i am not because i was not a participant maybe i didn't get the feed it'll go no. on the email i forgot yeah, no, no 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 it goes yeah. on that whatsapp group No, on email also. Okay, so let me go and get the get the iPad. That's where it must yeah. be. Yeah. The dentist What? failed in his job, so I was relieved earlier. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> What happens to an iPad when I give it to you? 
Et puis comme ça, you pad. Ha ha ha. Rajan, that's pretty good actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that's a that's a PJ. <laughs> well, the PJs always abounded in Sana. We are used mm. to PJs. <clears throat> mm. Vivek, I think you should start reading it. Yeah. But then you'd have to read it again when Harbans comes back. <clears throat> Chalo, I have to uh, Harbans has probably read the poem four times since you sent it to him. Yeah, I think we can just talk what? a little bit. Vivek, you want to take a bet? What? That he's read it or not? That he's not read it. <laughs> yeah, even I don't think so. He's too busy. I, I think he's read it for sure. <laughs> Now we'll have to ask him this. Take, yeah. take a bet. Take a bet. If you're that sure. Okay, come on. okay. let's let's take a bet. Yeah. What do you want to bet on? How he, much? He, he, when he receives it, he has a quick read. And that's about it. But this was like now a month and a half ago. So he's forgotten now. That's I'm my... Talking about you. You're talking about me? Yes. Come on, don't Behind spoil it. Uh, whatever bad things you've been saying, I don't want to hear about them. <laughs> we want to know that do you read all the poems that are sent to you more yes. than a couple of times? Oh, I read them very carefully. Sanjeev, you owe me. <laughs> Did I didn't think... bet. I didn't bet. Why are you nailing me? Who bet? Sorry, who bet? I said, he's, I said he's probably forgotten it. it no, 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 no. So no. long back. Ah, okay. But it was a long time, but I read it many times this time as well. Each time I carefully read the poems. I crack them. I have to understand what the poem is about to be able to lead the discussion. In case you all dry up and you don't know what to say, I have to be able to, uh, to know what's going on. Most of the time we don't know what we have to say. We suddenly pick up a cue. Yeah, you need to have some ammunition on each poem to be able to, yep. to talk about it. Okay, how did you all like it? We'll start the discussion. Where have you gotten to? We haven't oh. read it. See? We will oh, read it oh. to you. Sorry, you sorry, said... sir. Please, Vivek, start. So, I've just introduced a little picture to create some atmosphere. Anyway, the name of the poem is Faith. Here is the humble caterpillar. Look at him, rippling toward that twig. Watch how he attaches himself to it, binding himself to what he knows he needs. What is it about this attachment that allows him to give over his known and sturdy body? Oops. I'm sorry, I'm getting a whole lot of echo. Sorry, what is it about again. this attachment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that allows him to give over his known and sturdy body, his known and sturdy world. See how he dissolves from all he knows into all that he doesn't know, from all that he now is into all that he is becoming. How his body accomplishes what our minds can scarcely imagine. Here is the humble caterpillar. He has lived his whole life on milkweed plants, one foot above the ground. Now he lives his whole life floating from breeze to breeze, from flower to flower, from nectar to nectar, finally flying from Vermont where he lives, where I live, sorry, to Mexico, where I have never been. Anything is possible in this world. <laughs> Hmm. Faith. Ah, and the photograph is the the butterflies. Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I think it's about these monarch butterflies that mm. that you know they are, that are so abundant in the eastern part of the U.S. and. Canada, and then they migrate in such a majestic way. 
millions of them all mm. the way to Mexico, 3,000 miles away. Mm. I think the poem is about transitions. Yeah. From, from being almost an, a sturdy, uh, perhaps ugly caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly, but it has to go through a lot in life before he gets there. He, she, butterfly gets there. Transitions. Metamorphosis. Yep. Leap of faith. Yes. Faith ah, is. yeah. What is this faith? Leap of faith. Okay. Why would it be a leap of faith, uh, Vivek? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, there you have this uh, very, like you said, a sturdy little but uh, caterpillar who knows quite everything. You know, eat, eating all the plants, and he has no idea that he is going to transform into this absolutely magnificent creature which probably has a very short life and it is for him like he has no idea what's going to happen it's like little suspense all along the way but yeah, for example goes into a in, in our adolescence when we are caterpillars and uh, well we're getting through life at that time being tough in whichever way we all know that we're going to grow up and we are going to become something. So Vinay, you were never a caterpillar. <laughs> what was the snide remark? <laughs> Not a snide remark. I said, Vinay, you, are ne you were never a caterpillar. You were always a butterfly. Oh, lovely. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> always a butterfly. But a, a very substantial one with lots of substance. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Get to the the, the, point. the thrust of the poem, yeah. Um, for me, it's transitions. Yeah, but what's the philosophical import of the poem? What's it trying to say at a deeper level? Rahul, please. I think Minnie has got her hand up. I uh, think... So. Uh, uh, Rahul, you're you're up to go. Yes, yes. What I think is, it's about uh, his detached submission. You know, he he is uh, not attached to the outcome. He has submitted himself fully to what uncertainties lie ahead. He doesn't know what lies ahead, and that is what causes the alchemy or the met metamorphosis into the next completely different uh, him, where. Uh, he was just stuck to one weed plant and now here he's flying all the way, migrating all the way from Vermont to Mexico. You know? So that's the that's the power of alchemy, I guess. And that's the power of detached, you know, being detached to the outcome. Mm -hmm. And he just gave up all that he was about till that moment for what he could be without knowing what he was getting into. Okay, uh, Aradhya, come in, Aradhya. Yes, sir. Mm. Uh, I think metamorphosis was the word that uh, encapsulates what I thought when I went through the poem. Uh, it's about moving from a stage in which one is kind of only looking for survival into a stage in which one is uh, kind of fulfilling their uh, I'm, and I'm making air quotes here, fulfilling their destiny. And if the destiny of this metaphorical butterfly is to uh, leave their place of origin, leave the place where they were born, to go, as Vivek sir said, 3,000 miles halfway, uh, a quarter of a way across the world, to become what they were supposed to be. It's kind of the uh, inevitability of destiny but only in the case of this caterpillar to butterfly metamorphosis. If we were to take this as a human parable, if we were to try and put it in the context of uh, human experience, perhaps I could draw a parallel with us growing up in the place that, uh, in our uh, you know, place of birth, and then uh, leaving that behind, taking all the experiences, taking all the 
strength from that place and venturing to new places to explore more and to grow as people. Like passing out from Sanaa. No, Absolutely. No, uh, that no, would be a uh, <laughs> great metaphor, yes. Yeah, Mini has her hand up. Um, I, sorry, how come I never see Minnie's hand up? I'm just seeing a static photo of her. Oh, Minnie, yes. Oh, no, on the left side. Minnie, well. sorry, you're very patient. And because you're static, we don't... Uh, yeah. We, we're missing sorry. you. Sorry, please yeah, come no, in, no, Minnie. Your hand is on the left. Oh, no, oh sorry, not, not at all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Not at all. I'm, I'm sorry I can't play my video because it's for the same reason that Aradhya can't play it because mm. if I do it, the my connection it will go off. So beautiful image here. I I, uh, I I'm I'm looking at this poem. Uh, hang on, let me just open it up. And um, uh, and I I the way the way what resonated first for me was how f faith in what and 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 the and the answer is in the poem itself. Faith in his body that his this humble caterpillar didn't know in an intellectual kind of way where the future was. He couldn't imagine that, but his body knew to ripple towards that twig. His body knew to attach himself to it. His body knew that he would now be moving. So there was a knowledge within his body that kind of propelled him forward. And it's, uh, and, and, and by the way, FYI, uh, we are in Kansas. We are the one of the stops that the monarchs make, and it's uh, it is just a amazing sight to see these delicate creatures go through thousands and thousands of miles and do their thing. So um, so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, mm. I was a caterpillar. I came from India to California. <laughs> oh, one, one, one other thing. I loved the use of the word dissolves in this, in this sentence. See how he dissolves from all he knows into all that he doesn't know. So that's, that's in keeping with, the, with that not knowing uh, uh, ethos, which is so clear in Eastern philosophy in Eastern theology, uh, that not knowing that it's not an intellectual construct, it is a knowing that 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 transcends that. I think building on that, many is, is following in that same paragraph is about the how his body accomplishes what our minds can scarcely imagine. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. And in fact, the mind or the knowingness of things, intellectual knowing, gets sometimes gets in the way. Well, that's that's my own reference, but but uh, but uh, uh, yeah. Come, come, please. Yeah. I also um, stopped and thought about this word attachment because it could be the physical. Louder, come, come. Um, Austin is calling you. <laughs> Nadia, I'm busy. I can't talk. Bye. <laughs> that was this. About the, the physical world. Kum -kum. Kum -kum. Kum -kum. Hmm? Okay, so um, I think my microphone is here, but anyway. So um, the word attachment. <laughs> Uh, could be the, the physical attachment of the caterpillar when uh, he starts to form the chrysalis, or it could also be attachment uh, in the emotional sense, you know, where we differentiate between love and attachment, you know. So I, I, I hovered over that for a while and sort of just, just thought about how the caterpillar is um, <coughs> so much more evolved than us human beings, where we are constantly attached to things and can't let go and cause so much suffering in our lives. <coughs> While here, this little humble creature is able to just let go and, you know, transform. It, it's, uh, I, I like that part of it very much. <clears throat> Anything more? Anybody else? Any I ideas? I think it's touched upon the issue of immigration, because it actually can also be about immigration. Um... 
only reverse to what uh, Trump wanted. This is Americans going to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> No wall can stop them, huh? Uh, no, I think we've gotten as much as we can out of this poem. Vivek, sum up, give us the names, and uh, we'll move so, on. Yeah, I've sent the name. I've WhatsApp the name. Oh. And, uh, and I think one of the important things we are sort of missing out in this poem, or which we're not really, is the last line. It's how anything is possible. Yeah, it's if you really look at it, if you really look at the world around you, sometimes mm. you think nothing is going to move or whatever, but actually, really deep down, this poem tells you, Kuch bhi ho sakta hai. Kuch bhi. Or hua bhi hai. <laughs> okay Hello. thank you thank you vivek uh, right, moving um, on moving on to the next poem from the waiting list uh, which we're glad to have sanjeev with us because he wasn't here at the beginning but now we're going to have his poem sent in from last time and uh, it's no. coming to you now Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I'm missing two things here and I'll have to go and retrieve them. Uh, but you can please read it. It's very short. Who are you asking to read? No, no. Everyone is reading it, right? Or do I? Need yeah, we're all it? we're all reading it. We're all reading yeah, it. I read yeah. later. No, no. But there are two things missing, right? There's the title missing and the uh, speaker, the the author, which has to be brought later. The author is later, uh, but I did, did, was there a title? I no. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Read. What was the title? You can just tell us. Oh no, that's what I said. Yeah, uh, Arbaz, those are the two uh, things I sent this in February. So uh -huh. I have now misplaced the two. I will find them before the end of the day's play. Okay. I'll while people read, I'll look for them here. There are more people hidden than there are revealed. Uh, I didn't get a title even the last time in the email. No, no, so, Arban, that's what uh, I said. Uh, uh -huh. I need to provide these two things. Okay. But anyway, let us. It, it's, it's, it's not a very complicated. No, it doesn't need any uh, uh, more than what's already there. Please um, go ahead, give us a reading, and then we'll discuss. Right. So I'll put this right here, so I'm looking at it. Spring passes and one remembers one's innocence. Summer passes and one remembers one's exuberance. Autumn passes and one remembers one's reverence. Winter passes and one remembers one's Perseverance. Okay, those key words are there. Um, 
Minnie, your hand is always up. It's permanently up. So we we'll let you go. Start. Oh no, no, no! I'm so sorry. As I, I, I forgot to. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll always sorry. ready to. We, well, you're through the sorry. enthusiastic batchmate. No, 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 no. I, I, I forgot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But make use of it and come in and say a few words. Would you like to? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, you know, um, on my on my first reading of it, I love the juxtaposition of seasons with the emotional state of a human being. Uh, that was an interesting juxtaposition. Yes, it's the device of the poem to do that, but uh, it's the philosophy that we need to talk about. So the first two bits are quite easy. Uh, spring and, uh, what is it? Spring and you know, innocence summer and exuberance but what is perseverance well, what is uh, reverence in the autumn would somebody like to enlighten me on what what we mean by autumn reminds us of of reverence you have the leaves fallen and the renewal of life perhaps when yeah when the leaves fall and the the tree knows the new leaves are going to come back uh Ra Ra Raj is dying to come. Okay. <laughs> okay. Basically, the fall is beautiful, and when you see a beautiful thing, you find you feel a certain sense of reverence. I'm sorry, I don't buy that at all. Why would the fall be any more beautiful or less beautiful, and requiring more reverence than spring or summer? No. Can I uh, but Chitra, please, Chitra ji. Yeah. Uh, ji, to me, uh, this uh, sort of seems to represent the four seasons in a man, four stages in a man's life. Right. So spring representing youth mm. and innocence. Yes. Summer representing, uh, sorry, childhood, spring uh, representing childhood. Exuberance, uh, summer yeah. representing youth with ex exuberance. Yeah. Autumn passes, then you start. Well, I don't know whether <laughs> as we age, we sort of move more towards uh, God. Spiritualism. Or, yeah, yeah, spiritualism more than anything. Mm -hmm. And then, and then winter is the old age, and so we remember perseverance. So. I think so, we're talking about the four Okay, pages. so Chitra, you're yeah. saying that the reverence is that we turn to spirituality and God in our autumn, in the autumn of our lives. Yes, yes. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. And what about, uh, I'm not sure, sure if that was the only reading. I think reverence also might mean that um, in the autumn of, of our lives, we come to appreciate we come to appreciate others we learn from others we come to revere knowledge and wisdom we're yes. less carefree mm -hmm. we're less carefree and we learn that we have to be modest in this world that the world is more complicated so it's that kind of more modest state when we're in the autumn of our lives as compared to or and then the winter who would like to talk about winter and perseverance i mean that's a quite simple but anybody else would like to go rahul unmute yourself rahul unmute rahul 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 <laughs> yes start again say one more a war will begin <clears throat> like a cord. See, uh, what I thought about the autumn first, I'll tell you, I thought that it was about being more respectful towards life, towards uh, the giver of that life, towards other people. And I guess that comes with experience, that comes with age. And uh, about the, the last one, the perseverance, I think when 
people grow old they become they, they kind of see um that you know if you persevere you can make a success of life whether you walk slowly or you walk fast whether you have huge bank bank balances or you have small bank balances if you persevere you can still make it i think it's about that in old age we learn that you have that it's a long run it's a marathon you've got to keep going yeah chitra that's where the perseverance comes in hmm as you get older everything requires much more out of you physically that's what you yeah. said before mentally hmm. as well. so hmm. i think that's the perseverance part of it it is life you're talking about life sure 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 anything we've missed out in this poem which has not come in sanjeev tell us that we have missed something oh, i don't i don't think one has missed because it's subject to interpretation i mean it's about nature right and it's about one is the climatic uh, changes of the season and then the saying is the climatic changes of the human being uh, and which we've touched upon um uh, i guess the reverence bit is also reflection because that's when you see the major change uh, when the leaves fall and renewal is taking place and uh, that's a, a different kind of thing because the rebirth is being germinated then the last bit which you talked about advance it's true it's uh, the the sonar song the, the school song has it stick it still so it's about perseverance hmm. in winter It's the last bend, if you wish, on your hot sun run, to put it into context. Uh, so, it's very crisply written. I thought when I saw it, uh, and it was picking up uh, very simple themes, universal themes, which uh, are so obvious, and yet one uh, gets confused of being. Uh, having the wrong mood in what it comes at the wrong stage it happens and mm. if someone is overly exuberant in one's old age they say there's a punjabi word for it uh, but i won't oh. say it what is, is it in what? english no vernacular here uh-huh. <laughs> so but what is the punjabi word we have to know It's... offline we name <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you know okay it, no i think uh... I think you've said uh, said it right there Sanjeev but we can take something away f- from this poem and this is why we have poetry circles it's because the poets of this world teach us something and we hope to learn from them and here the word that's the the lesson that comes to us is my dear chap it's a long haul and you've got to stick at it for a long time and if you're still jumping up and down in innocence or in uh, exuberance wait till it hits you that it's a long haul so better see yourself from an overall position and learn that in the end you've got to stick to it for a very long time so this would be a poem for example for aradhya in sweet innocence and sweet youth that learn already that it's a long haul i wish i'd read this poem when i was your age aradhya uh it's a pleasure to read this poem sir and uh, yes i think i had a lot to learn from all of your perspectives <laughs> so thank you so much do you want chai yeah. And so I've I've sent you the name of the poet on the on the website. So you... okay, thank you. Allow us, Sanjeev, to move on because we've got a few more poems and we're already at one hour. We've only got half an hour left. So coming on, coming to the next poem. It was the title, Sanjeev. So it's a poem by Yoko Ono. It's without title. Oh, Yoko Ono! How lovely! How lovely! Rahul 
We're going to give you your vegan poem, your vegetarian poem, your gardening poem. Again. Well, this was to be originally read in January and uh, it didn't find a turn. And February, I couldn't attend. So. <laughs> uh, have a read and I'll just be back. Man, it must have been something you drank, Albert. Ajmola. <laughs> who, who's the person with the heart, uh, you know, and uh, all those? What's it, fruit? Is it? Uh, yummy raspberries, Raj. Yeah, there you go. And I was munching some dessert, which I don't want you to see. Uh oh. <laughs> so he gave you that because it's it's a healthy section. <laughs> Out with that apple crumble pie. Oh. <laughs> Something more simple, caps. <laughs> Gajar ka halwa. <laughs> <laughs> Sandesh. Yum, scram, Gajar ka halwa. Oh my gosh. That, 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 that just makes my mouth water. Sandesh. There you go. Rasagulla. Yeah. Do, do you know do what's too. special? Do you know what's special about a Beng Bengali wedding? Sandesh. Not just that. The vegetarian Sandesh. food served there. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 the vegetarian food not served there. Okay. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> so, so I was at this uh, wedding in Kolkata when I was in uh, school, and. Uh, so they have a custom of you know the bride being carried around the uh, uh, fire seven times by her brothers. So one of the girls standing next to me says, says she says, my brothers are going to have a hard time, she says. Then? Doesn't sound complete, Raj. <laughs> then? No, no, oh, no. It. it's a reflection it, right? on the bride. I mean, She's she's heavy. They they allowed to <laughs> carry her on <laughs> seven times. Okay, so but they have to make all the sounds also, right? And those would be right, coming right. naturally. Yeah. The women uh, 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 blow it, uh, conscious, you know, conscious or they they just do it by no no they just uh, there is a sound of the tongue going yeah yeah the same thing yeah. that the Arabs do. You're right. It's been a long time. I'm married to a Bengali. Oh, okay. I see. There you go. Okay, I please go. I still need my $500 rupees back for national integration. Oh, all right. Cool. Uh, Rahul Ji, please come in and uh, give us your poem. Yes, yeah, sir. It's titled The Rising. The corn seeds I sowed the other day haven't morphed and seen light yet. The rain followed by the sun could have made the crust hard. Maybe the soil is cold still or the air too dry. Someday soon, when fresh rains soften the crust, or when the sun warms up the soil, the seeds will rise, and with them, I too will rise. Okay, Vivek. It's um, uncanny that everybody today is reading poems about nature and, you know, rising and all these amazing little concepts love it love it don't have to think too hard with those no. aw awfully tough poems that uh harban sometimes reads uh, it's coming another one is a tough one is coming for you Vivek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Rahul. Yes. Uh, we, we get the poem. We get the poem. Um, okay. Well, what, what, where's um, uh, Mini? You're the philosopher. Take us through the poem. Take us through the idea. What's the mood? What's the whimsy? What's the. Um, what are we getting in this poem, uh, Mini? Thank you. Uh, you know, be beautiful. Uh, the the first thought that 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 occurred to me was uh, there's a Buddhist sutra about this, and Titnath Han talks about this that when the conditions are right, hmm. the flame appears, which means that many things have to come together for an event to happen, any event to happen, hmm. and th this poem so beautifully captures that that you know the sun the rain, the crust, the ground, all of this have to be just so. And it is in the nature of the seed that when the conditions are right, it will naturally, it is in, it's in its nature to morph as, as, as Rahul has, has said here. And it's the same for human beings as well. It is in our nature to bloom when conditions are right. So when, so the sutra goes on to say that, uh, that uh, instead of blaming the person, look at the conditions that the, con uh, that the person has been in, change the conditions and the natural uh, 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 nature of the human is to bloom and the, and the person will bloom. Beautiful. Very nice, correct, v very nicely put. And um, one can quickly add to that, it's about the right conditions for especially young people, seeds. When you need to nurture children, you have to give them the right conditions, especially. We all need the poem, the poet, the voice in the poem says, I hope maybe one day I'll get the right conditions and I too will rise up and the poem is spoken from a rather wistful voice, but it's even more true for children, this idea that they need the right conditions like seeds. But anyway, moving on, anybody else more to say? If I may, sir. Ar Aradhya, please. Uh, I also felt that it's a lot about patience and uh, uh, I mean, waiting for the, not waiting for the right conditions, but actually being prepared or looking forward to the right conditions in which one's uh, potential is realized or when's, uh, when one's, uh, you know, inherent capabilities sort of come to the surface and, you know, come to fruition. So that was a little bit that I took away from this poem. Yeah, reminds me Raj. Reminds me of all the times I've been a blooming idiot. I've been a blooming idiot. Yeah, like now. So. <laughs> uh, well, it's a pun, but uh, the substance is different here. Rahul, we yes. get it. We get it yeah. and we agree with it. Because time is short and we've got a few more poems to do, Allow us to move on. So let me uh, yeah, close this. Please one close, is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One is that it's also about optimism. Yes. Uh, a farmer is always optimistic and uh, waits for the right conditions along with the seeds. So the last two lines with them, I too will rise. So he's also waiting to rise. Yes. Second is also about social change. You know, sometimes ideas that uh, don't... Uh, are not agreed with, you know, with by the society for the meantime, but they wait like seeds for the right time to grow into something bigger and to come to reality, come to nice. be accepted. Yes. Nice. Yes. Yes, of course. And uh, the author's me, I, I wrote this. So, uh, congratulations, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we'll talk about this another time, Rahul, but because you've been away for a couple of times, um, 
We're coming for to one this time, sir. for one, one time. time. All right. I don't know if you were here or you followed the discussion, but this applies to everybody. When poets read their own poems here, uh, just as when we read a poem by an outside author, we write to thank him and we sum up the discussion and we send that to him. Well, when you r r write or read a poem here, uh, the chair or the vice chair writes to the poet, you, to thank you. That's point number one. But the second part of summing up the discussion, to put it up on our website, that part we would like to give to the poet himself who read the poem so that he sums up the discussion and he writes up that little two or three line report. This would be an exercise. It's an exercise for the poet to see how his work was received in the circle. And it, I think it might be a good idea rather than somebody else writing that little report. No, I've done that before, sir. I, I'll yeah. do this again. I've done Lovely. That. Lovely. Yeah. Okay, next poem. I'm go <laughs> quickly going to, and that next poem is Raj, you're next. So get oh, ready. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, Ayad. Oh, you know what, Harbans? You forgot to put press the recording button. Uh, it's been on all the time. Uh, yeah. Is, that... is it on? Yeah. yeah. It's on. Oh, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on, it's on. It's on. But um, yeah. Raj, I'm sorry I announced you, but there's Ayad here who's a new young man and uh, I must let him go before you. Sorry, I did. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You're going to make me cry. You're going to make me weep. No, 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 you, you, no you'll you, get your Please, you'll get your I wouldn't like to vote anyone, <laughs> you know. <laughs> No, 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 no. Now that you no, use no. that word, he'll definitely be. <laughs> what is that? Ara, I wouldn't like Ara to Adia, put you out. Adia, don't, <laughs> you know? don't is worry. Put you out. <laughs> Raj just loves to joke. Okay, submitted by Aradhya Akshat. Sensory deceptions. Please have a read. It's quite a long poem, so you might need a few minutes uh, to go through it. Maybe you well. Uh, it's quite easy to understand. So, two minutes, three minutes to read. If I may say so, somewhere in the middle, if we can get a picture of everybody, so um, Vinay or Vivek can take a picture. Then Chitra and Arun should come on video. And, and, and uh, ah, good. And meaning. Arun? Arun is um, pottering around the house. Oh, here he is. Hmm. Oh, difficult to read if so much talking is going on. In and, Please, quite true. Silent. Sorry. Sorry. A quick photo and then we'll shut up. Ma Madame Kaur. M. Kaur. What's her first name? Maninda. But uh, Maninda. she is not on video. Right. Who took the picture? Vivek, Done. have you taken? Done. Yeah. Okay. Done. Done? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Quiet. Out. Quiet now for the for the reading. This camera broke.
I've read. Yep, read. Need three. You know, you know what's the, see, I'm a South Indian brought up a North Indian. So when you shake your head, I do this. So, the, so Rajan, we saw your shaking head. Ah, there you go. <laughs> okay, has everybody had a good read of this poem? Yes. Any we, we. Who is the slowest person in the room? I am. And I read it just now again. So I think we can say that it's been read. But I'm not sure everybody has understood it. And it's quite a, a, a serious poem. But we let Aradhya take us through and we will follow it on our phones as well. Aye, Aradhya ji. Thank you, sir. Do my senses deceive me? Or is that petrichor I smell? It's been such a long time. It's become so hard to tell. Reality from wishful thinking. Real events from dreams. In limbo life seems. Awaiting a wet spell. Do my senses deceive me? Or is that an oasis I see? It's been such a long trudge. The horizon never seems to budge. Until this lush image appeared, soothing my eyes that the sun had seared. I am near it, throat parched. I hope it's not a deceptive mirage. Do my senses deceive me? Or is that some good news I hear? It's been such a dismal year. Our spirits want lifting more than ever, cutting through the lies and deceptions, positively affecting human perceptions, rising above the mire of greed. A little clean hope is what we need. Do my senses deceive me? Or is that a cool wind I feel? Blowing away the smoke screens, that arise from borderland war fields. The world seems to be in turmoil. Dirty politics bringing blood to a boil. It's high time for a clean sweep. Flush out earth's toxins wide and deep. While my senses seek reality, my mind rejects conformity. Combined, they wield awesome power and give me strength to climb every tar. It's almost like a never give in. And I wish I could go over it verse by verse, but no, I wouldn't be able to. Somebody should summarize. Well, it's the uh, current situation, right? Isn't it about today? It's about the war in the Chinese border. It's about dirty politics. Uh, it's about fake news. It's about, you know, this uh, COVID around you. It's about spirits being dampened. It's, it's really the situation that everyone's going on where there's toxins in the air, there's toxins in the ground, there's toxins in politics, there's just toxins everywhere. Uh, but and, the world uh, has been like, sorry, Sanjeev, it's not just about modern time, not these years, it's uh, the world has been like this always. I think all the points no. in there are about the horrible world most well, of the no, time. Oh, no, Urban said probably disagree a bit because that's the nature of societies one must disagree no, no, uh, of the 
I think we've had a lot of positive energy and a lot of good times in history. And right now there's a culmination of a lot of negativity. And I think it's payback time, like cyclicality, right? Anything in life has cycles. And uh, it's, it's also your sense of reality, right? It's, uh, you can be happy and comfortable in the most absurd world because you create your own sense of reality. Right. Here the, the, the ons assault and the onslaught on reality is so much that you're wondering, you know, you're hoping to get any good news to, and but you're questioning, is it my senses deceiving me? Because, oh, this almost looks good. It can't possibly be. So it's a, that's what I see. It's, it's a, it's hope being uh, sought in very grim times, uh, but with very little confidence, if I may. But anyway, that's one, one insight. It definitely sounds about the, about 2020, because uh, really a year like this is in anybody's living memory. It's never happened. There have been bad times, but this is the worst of the worst in many ways. So I feel he's writing about the, this last year that's gone by. Uh, it's been such a dismal year. You could say that about this year, but it's a subjective poem. It's not a poem about um, the real world 2020, uh, the China war or Iraq or anything like that. This is about how one person has, is seeing his life um, and almost getting there, not quite getting there. Um, it's about being enraged, hoping for better times. So it's a poem about a personal view of the year of life of things that come at you but uh, coming quickly to the end of the poem while my senses seek reality so i'm trying to make out what's going on in this world is it a mirage is this smoke from a war will this end up uh, will this end nicely or badly while my senses seek reality my mind rejects conformity. Love that. Now, what does that mean? My mind rejects conformity. I don't want to follow a trite path. I don't want to just follow like sheep. I want to have my own opinion on things. Combined, if I seek the, if I see reality for what it really is and don't fall for mirages and if my mind thinks out of the box and doesn't just follow received opinion combined they wield an awesome power and give me strength to climb every tower so that's the punchline well we can all, of course, agree with the punchline. Like I felt that the punchline was the never given part of it. Mm, it's more, more complicated than never given, Vinay. Yeah, that's probably being too simplistic. But yeah. that, that's what I felt. And I love the word petrico, which I'm presuming means the smell of rain on uh, dry ground. Yes, it's a lovely That's word to take away from this uh, reading. I had to look it up as well. I'd met it before, but I'd forgotten. But it's a nice word to, to remember and drop in society when next we get a chance. Thank you, Aradhya, for the, for the word. Um, What's the word? Petrico, Petri stone, core, blood, of circulation of blood, the the water on on dry soil. Um, Rahul, do you know this word? Is it a bloody stone? What's that? 
No, it's the, the water in the veins of the stones of the earth. All right, it's not bloody stone. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, Rahul, it's a nice yes. word for you. Did you get this word, Petrikor? No, I, I didn't. I need to... Uh, I was hearing the discussion on it, but I did not get it. Okay, I mean, just it's a word that you might it's, like to know about. But um, what about this poem then? What, what What's that punchline, you see? I have a problem with that punchline. It's in the first person. And this guy is saying, oh, if I can see things as they are, and if I'm, if I don't follow received opinion, then I can conquer everything. Well, what you want to say to this person is, hey, wait a minute, you know, who do you think you are that you can just conquer the whole world? The world is a complicated place. And don't go around thinking you can be all powerful like this. So it's a little bit too boastful of an end for me. I think a first person poem has to be self deprecatory. It cannot ever be saying I'm cleverer than anybody else. I don't see it I as boastful at all. Long. I don't see it as boastful at all. It's the same thing as the sound of music line that says, climb every mountain, ford every stream. Yes, but not I can climb every mountain. I can, I will be able to. That is to reassure yourself. Same sense. Okay. Ah. Now, I think we, Vinay said it, it's to reassure yourself. Well, then you don't say things like that in public. You say that to yourself. You reassure I, yourself in private. You don't say, I'm the best. You say, no, but, well, come on, it? buck up, and try and but be the, the best. Why, 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 why must you be self-deprecating? Sanjeev, come in, come in, Sanjeev. No, why must, why must one be self-deprecating? In a poem, in a poem. Because you're talking to other people and the voice that's talking to other people cannot be a boastful voice on the page because it immediately it immediately provokes the remark. Yeah. Uh, it provokes the remark, well, how come you're so clever? What makes you think you are so clever or better than anybody else? Well, I'm, I'm writing a point. I so guess Jeev, the poet is let, speaking on everybody's behalf. Like it's a liberating poem. It's a poem kind of connect. Uh, the the poet is trying to connect with everybody else who's reading the poem. And perhaps in that sense, he's saying that you know I can climb every tower. Uh, what you're saying it means you can climb every tower. Yes, you, tower. you can also climb it. Yeah, and it is liberating in that sense. It, it says we can climb every tower, huh? It says, I can. Uh, well, I mean, I, I get that point. I get that point. But it's a, it's a technical question. I think this is what it would be better if it was said in that way. Uh, the, the use of the personal pronoun I is a very delicate matter in poetry. And um, I, I've given my opinion. Anybody else? I, I feel that poetry is very personal. You're not re really writing it to read it to people. It's to to yourself. It's a very personal moment expressed to yourself. We've had this before, Vinay, but I think if you expect somebody else to take the trouble to read your poem, you've got to address your poem to him or her. And it cannot just be one's own look at one's own self uh, in an enclosed space and just thinking, uh, this is how I feel. It, it can't be like that. It has to be a calculated address to take a person, an intelligent person who gives you his time and his attention from point A to point B. There are no accidents in poetry. There's no uh, flourish and I'll just say what I feel. Poetry is a reflection on a subject of of a general kind it's a it can be from your particularity of how you feel the poet feels of course it starts from there but the poem and the poet must visit his or her reader and take him from point a to point b and not just inundate him with what one thinks he should hear and read you've got to take him from where he is at 
to where you want to take him to. Um, so it's a it's a very. So we all agree to disagree, Arvan. Uh, you can uh, yeah. all be against me. You can all be against me. No, no, me. it's, it's not against. Please don't take it personally. Just because no, no, your no, opinion no. is different, it's not against. No, no, I agree. This is my opinion. I have this uh, debate with many people all the time. And um, and people say I have poems, I have many opinions. I mean, any there are many interpretations. Anybody can say anything about a poem. Uh, you think this, I think this. A poem has many meanings. So... What the hell are you talking about taking people from A to B? Uh, I say, no, poems don't have many meanings. A successful poem has a thrust, a point. And that thrust or point is a, almost a mathematically calculated trajectory. It's not just any old words thrown together or even what you think is happening to you on a certain day. It, it's it's a... It's a generalization, and a generalization requires careful thought. So, Parvans, it really comes to a basic question. Is poetry a science or is it an art? Because oh, if no. it's an art, mm -hmm. then there is no central focus point. Because of, course it's an, of course it's an art. We all agree it's an art, um, we, but it's not irrational. Can we, can we move on from the philosophy of poetry? <laughs> well, ask the poet. Let's ask the poet. Now, uh, the poet. Well, wait, wait, wait. We don't ask the poet from... Uh, we don't know who wrote the poem. We don't know who wrote Rade the poem. Did. As the person who presented the poem. Uh, but uh, wait, before we let him talk, anybody else wants to say something? I guess I guess I I I just want to make a interest I I I read the last paragraph while my senses seek reality my mind rejects conformity combined they wield awesome power so I was I I I started questioning combined with what is combined senses and mind reality and conformity or both. So, so without, without, so, so it left me confused. So therefore, I couldn't quite grasp the awesome power because it. I wasn't quite sure where exactly the power lay, and therefore, I wasn't quite taken by the last sentence that said, "And give me strength to climb every tower." So there's a, there's a. It's it's a on the first reading it it seems it appears interesting and then when you kind of look at it a little deeper you kind of wonder you're left wondering I guess that's my point and I I I, I saw I saw some, some beautiful images here of blowing away smoke screens that arise from borderland war fields uh, do my senses deceive me even in the smoke screen of things. Uh, so the, uh, the, the kind of confusion, angst uh, that the first part of the poem uh, left me with. And then in the end, the last paragraph was a very definitive thing, as if you've reached a conclusion that this is where the power is. And so therefore that, that it didn't quite jive. That last paragraph didn't quite jive with the earlier paragraph for me. But beautiful in its wordage. Yeah, there's a lot in the poem. And um, yes, the descriptions are fun. And the doubt and the hesitation in each of those earlier paragraphs comes out as being the main part of the subject of the poem. How am I going to make head or tail of all these different positions and, and situations? Um, it's a very hesitant voice trying to find his way. And then at the end, we get this very tough conclusion. And I agree. Um, I'm not quite clear how uh, it all kind of fits together, how you'll find the strength to conquer every mountain and the 
poem says is by being, uh, by not following other people, by rejecting conformity. If you reject conformity, um, then you will get somewhere. I think uh, there's also this idea, Mini, that my senses seek reality and my mind if my if the senses seek reality so if my uh, if i see things correctly and if my mind rejects conformity if i think correctly and don't follow received wisdom then the two together you're asking this question what are the two things combining they are perception and analysis if I see things better and clearly without a mirage, and if my mind sinks without conformity and analyzes for myself how things fit together, then the two together are, have, have tremendous power. And then I can conquer every mountain. What the poem should be saying or might be saying or is saying is then you can conquer every tower. Hmm. That's that. That's not how I read it. Because because the they combined, they wield awesome power. So what is this they? Uh, is it is it is it the combination of senses and mind, or combination of reality and conformity? Is it a combination of all of the above? So that 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 kind of I and I and I don't I, and it didn't resonate in a way that uh, the earlier part resonated because I could really identify with the, the angst that I've been in, the confusion that I have felt, the, the almost anger that I have felt over things in this last year and probably more than that, but especially in the last year. And I have not reached a conclusion. I, I don't know. So, so this, this was a very, very, uh, for me, this last paragraph was a very confusing response, and therefore I couldn't resonate with it. Not because it, it isn't beautiful, but because I personally couldn't, re because I don't have an answer. I don't know if I have the strength to climb every tower. I don't know if my only my senses can see reality. I don't know if only my mind rejects conformity. I don't know that. I can't resonate with that. Yeah. Okay, Raj, Raj, you've got your hand up, please. Yeah, come. I think, I think we've spent enough time on this poem, and I think that we should move on. Uh, we'll take your point, and we'll allow Aradhya to close. Yes, please. <clears throat> uh, thank you all so much for, you know, giving some thought into what I wrote. And uh, the last part has... Uh, proved to be very divisive, I would say. <laughs> I guess that's what comes from being a prose writer uh, before being a poet. Because I tend to bring things to a conclusion uh, even when they might not need it. Uh, so I guess that's why it's so uh, subjective uh, at the end. And yes, it was a very contemporary poem, as most of you pointed out. Uh, I... Uh, this year, the past year, not 2021, uh, was obviously uh, unprecedented and uh, it showed us all new sides of things that might not have been very apparent before. I mean, things were thrown into uh, a very stark contrast, if I, may, if I might say so, from the way we used to live our lives before the pandemic, before the lockdowns, before uh, before having to live our lives through screens. Uh, so I guess that's where I was coming from. And uh, I'm just glad that, you know, it led to a great discussion. So uh, um, another thing that had come to my mind while we were discussing the, uh, the use of first person. So very early on, when I was very uh, young, I was uh, starting to explore more reading uh, Sorry. Uh, there's this uh, writer called Allen Ginsberg, and he wrote a poem called Howl. And the first lines were became very uh, famous. And they were, I saw the uh, beautiful or young minds of my generation torn apart uh, by 
society and other things so i guess that kind of plays subconsciously into uh you know how a poet presents his own creations uh, but thank you all so much and uh, i guess that's it for right now thank you rajya thank you and welcome and keep on writing and we hope to see you many more times in the future um yes next poem by raj coming to you in a moment Okay, it's gone out. Please have a read. I'm going to leave, guys. I have to leave. Uh, sure. People have to leave, I guess. Uh, Okay, we're still six, seven of us. At least some of the ladies are left. A couple of people have left. Never mind. You don't count her bunch. The ladies are there. <laughs> I'll I'll have to dress up like a girl for you, or what? <laughs> the beard, the beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Raj, recite. My guardian knot, love curtain to a stifling bond. What are they? Let me start again. Okay. Start again. My God, I'm not. Love curdled to a stifling bond, a drifting, uncontrolled mind. I cut that Gordian knot and set myself free. Not of a world, my kingdom. Simply my own freedom. I untied the Gordian knot. I took my happiness in both hands. I told her straight, no ifs or buts. It hurt both, but it had to be done. I tore asunder the Gordian knot. that loose that the loose ends plainly the hurtful words i could not utter courage to do the deed i could muster i loosened the gordian knot ended all argument forever i hurled defiance at all judgment my mind serene so arbiter i burned the gordian knot set myself happy and free did everybody get it or should we have one more reading chitra did you understand it all unmute yes, yourself you yeah. understood you understood it okay well i read it i'm still trying to understand it <laughs> you're still trying to understand yeah. it in that case let's have one more reading please i'll do that all right raj my guardian not <clears throat> love curdled to a stifling bond a drifting uncontrolled mind i cut that gordian knot and set myself free not of a world my kingdom simply my own freedom i untied the gordian knot took my happiness in both hands i told her straight no ifs or buts it hurt both but it had to be done i tore asunder the gordian knot ducked the loose ends plain the hurtful words i could not utter courage to do the deed i could muster i loosened the gordian knot ended all argument forever i hurled defiance at all judgment my mind serene soul arbiter i burned the gordian knot set myself happy and free okay uh sanjeev do you get it do you see what yeah. this is about summarize yeah. summarize it, yeah i guess it's personal it's it's decisive it it shares the author who is amongst us views uh, the poet 
views uh, on a critical stage in his life. And uh, so it gives his point of view on the emotional aspects. Um, the things left unsaid is the other side. But this is a perspective from, because it's in the I form. So it is very clear that uh, the person was sort of forced into the situation. And uh, despite whatever judgments, it is very confident in the decision he took uh, for his happiness and freedom. Uh, because it had reached the point of, uh, uh, it's a very long relationship and that's the talk of the Gordian knot. It's a very tight knot. So to cut that requires a lot of uh, resolve and power and force and uh, conviction. It's not the easiest thing to cut. And if that's required to be cut to set yourself free, you know it is a very, 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 important decision and uh, so that's what it talks about it talks about divorce and separation about ending a, 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 a relationship correct well correct. It's more than a relationship because this is it's a marriage yeah it's a marriage but, yeah it's a guardian it's a knot yeah uh -huh, it's a marital knot as well yeah yes. uh rahul please come in yes so it's about you know, the guardian knot is, of course, a complicated knot. And uh, I guess uh, it's about, you know, the complications and how the person is getting beyond that and liberating himself. It's a difficult uh, thing to do. And he's described the difficulty, but then it's decisive in the end and how he has gotten past it and set himself happy and free. Yeah, uh, there are one or two interesting lines which are worth trying to clarify. Um, the hurtful words I could not utter, courage to do the deed I could muster. So my reading of that is, I could not say, get involved in the hurtful discussions of our, the end of our relationship, but I did and I could muster the courage to end the relationship and I just cut the knot. So the, there is this idea of uh, avoiding hurtful debates and discussions about the whole thing and saying, well, let's, let's cut loose from each other. Also, yeah, that's also the, the interesting why, thing, the how he has uh, used a different word for the Gordian knot in each of the stanzas. It's mm. from cut to untied to tore asunder to loosen and finally burn. Mm. So that imagery, you know, that each time he's uh, imagined it differently and in the end it's a decisive burning of the Gordian knot. Yeah, that's that's a device. Okay, uh, Sanjeev, you were saying something. Yeah, no, I, I think the interesting thing is like the first two sentences: "Love girdled to a stifling bond," and then a drifting, uncontrolled mind. It sort of lays out the situation, hmm. uh, and that explains the the penultimate paragraph where the hurtful words I could not utter, meaning the whys and the hows and I don't want to get involved in because it's already a drifting uncontrolled mind with love embedded in it. So you don't want to be hurtful because there is love. And the underlying thing is there is a, a happy past and a, and a lot of shared journeys and uh, experiences, but the unsustainability of it is what they talk, uh, the 
poet talks about, and there's a lovely line he's, he talks about when he tears asunder and ducked the loose ends flailing because to do that thing, the likelihood of getting hit and hurt while the whole process is going is very mm -hmm. high. And so he was very aware of that happening and sort of took a very active role of ducking and avoiding that, knowing it was going to happen. Um, and conscious about the hurt created to both because it is seems to be an action taken by one person. It's not a joint decision. It's a one person's decision uh, with the initiative and uh, walking out, inverted commas, or walking away or walking towards, whichever word you want to use, because I, you can't make um, value judgments here, but this is as the poetry is, as the poet, poetry is stated. And the last, uh, the, the, the very important point is the word soul arbiter. And that's about I will judge my actions, not, not give this power to society or anybody else. And that requires a lot of confidence and a lot of uh, self-awareness and a lot of um, uh, peace because you are really going through a very, very, very hard time. And so that talk about serenity and the mind because you can lose it. Yep. Yep. Uh, any of the ladies want to say something? Chitra or Vinay? No, I just think uh, Sanjeev has put it very, very well. Yeah, I... Louder, I clearer, louder, clearer, Chitra. Hmm? Come closer. No, I said, um, I think Sanjeev has put it very well. Indeed. And um, it reflects the, the pain that the poet has gone through. But at the mm. same time, the decision that has been taken has been final. And um, he's happy and free now. And so it's a good ending to this hmm. poem. And, and the decision is, does tear a person asunder? And... Uh, Yet, it's liberating at the end of it all because it's always better to get out of a relationship which is not working rather than torture yourself and the other person. Yeah. I think a lot is in the word Gordian knot. Yeah. Uh, I think that sums up the whole subject. When you're in a relationship, it's... You can't untangle it. It's so complicated. You can only cut it loose. Uh, and uh, the, the metaphor is absolutely apt for the situation. Well, I think we've come now to fully two hours. And um, so, Raj, please sum up and we'll stop. Okay. And uh, I want to, uh, first of all, the origins of the poem. So, you all remember from history class in school about Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. <clears throat> okay. But if you look it up in the Wikipedia, it is not exactly clear how he entang unentangled the knot. So with a sword. He cut it with a sword. No, that's not true. Ah. So actually, it's, uh, <clears throat> that's why the several different uh, ways of getting out of the Gordian knot that are put in the poem. <clears throat> Pretty much each of them to, to what are the methods that are specified in the article and some that are invented by the poet. Okay, <clears throat> so Sajeev uh, actually summarized it very well. And if I go over it, so this was a 40, what would have been a 45 year old marriage. And the decision to seek a divorce was made at the time that the poet was recovering from a, uh, 
from a, a mental disorder. All right. And which, which basically, uh, 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 manic bipolar, which basically is what a drifting, uncontrolled mind refers to. Mm. And it was a love, it was a love marriage, and uh, the love had curdled to a stifling bond. Okay, and Alexander, and the story about the Gordian knot was that whoever could untie it and could would become the king of, uh, become the ruler of the world. So that's why it's not a world. Uh, not a kingdom, but simply my own freedom. Freedom mm. from a marriage which had become stifled. So I untied God, which next two lines are pretty st straightforward. And the thing about the, the next third st stanza was that no amount of, so I was asked for explanations or the power, okay. But the explanations could not be given because one, they would have been they were would have been useless, and two, they they just could not be given orally. All right. So, so and life would definitely be better at for both of us eventually. So, exactly as Sanjeev explained, the uh, guardian knot was uh, torn and the loose ends were. So the next uh, uh, stanza is pretty straightforward as well. And then the defiance at all judgment. So as, would, as one would expect, there are lots of relatives and families and people who don't understand and who, who would think that, uh, you know, this, I mean, that to that, I, uh, that the poet is mad, I mean, which is not untrue, okay, in some sense. But the poet stands by his own decision and has been happy as a result. Yeah, we get it. We like it. We congratulate the poet and we will write to thank him and you will sum up the discussion, Raj. Yeah, hey, I always do that. Uh, oh, Rahul, are you trying to say something? No, sir. No, not at all. Oh, sorry. I saw your hand raised. I think we've had um, a long session and I'll thank everybody and we'll come to a stop now. And Aradhya, welcome. Chitraji, thank you. Rahul, welcome and thank you. And Raj, lovely. And Vinay, we want you back with lipstick and everything, please. <laughs> and uh, so I just you, need to get well, Harbans. It's just carrying on and on. I'm oh, my God. So, oh, I'm sorry to hear. I'm sorry to hear. This, this COVID, still the really COVID. Funny, I have to say. Mm, yeah, she you're got still, COVID. Uh, recovering from, no, but you're still recovering from that. You it know, it's been a long time. Now, Chitra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> months, but I have got so many after effects. Oh. And mm. the main okay. one being that I've got a, a, a arrhythmia, my heart, which never had a problem. Oh. I have a heart problem now. Oh, dear. Oh. That gets me at times, and I, you know, I feel listless. So that's why mm. I don't like uh, putting on any red lipstick today. Oh. So I said, let me be there. <laughs> Not be there really. But I think you'll feel better if you do put on the lipstick and <laughs> next time I promise. <laughs> yes. Okay. Look for, uh, look ladies and gentlemen, well. thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the next meeting, quickly, just one second, is the second Wednesday of uh, April. April. So it will be the fourteenth of April. Fourteenth of April. One four. Okay. okay. Make a note. And time flies, so start preparing your poems already. And I had prepared a poem for today, but I will put that on the website, on the WhatsApp uh, chat room for you to enjoy slowly on your own.
Yes, please do, and I'm sure it's a naughty poem. Um, <laughs> Somewhat. I, I'll send a private naughty one to you, Vinay, but not this time for everybody. <laughs> okay. Take care. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.